Happy Sabbath. Praise the Lord. Matthew, thank you very much for the scripture reading. Really appreciate it. Today we're going to uh, discuss growing closer to God, our Creator. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit, a bit about my family, my background, and then um, get into our service today. Um, if we go to the next slide. A couple uh, months ago, there was um, some dolphins, some Pacific white-sided dolphins spotted. I think this one was out in Sioux, but there have been a few of them around um, BC coast. And playing actually with um, some killer whales, some south resident killer whales. Have anyone heard about this? Now, why is that that we have dolphins playing with killer whales? Aren't killer whales supposed to eat dolphins? That's good. I heard things are supposed to, yes. They are resident killer whales. Actually, resident killer whales do not harm dolphins. But the resident killer whales have a cousin called the big killer whales. Those are transient. They'll come in here. And if they're close to the killer whale, or to the dolphin, they're, they're dinner. So how does these dolphins distinguish between one and the other? They get to know them. They're so close, they're cousins. And that's what we have to do with our Savior, with God. We have to get to know our God so close that we trust being so close to our God. If we can go to the next slide. So where is our lab going? Where are we going? Are we getting closer to our God? Next. God's love for us is infinite. If we could bow our heads, so we'll start with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this privilege to come here, to choose you. We thank you for this church on traditional shadeless people's land. And please use my words to be your will. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus Christ. Go to the next slide. This is my family growing up um, in the Nile. Go to the next one. Um, I'm the little guy in the front here. Um, my parents came over from from Poland. Um, my dad was in the Polish army, and um, when Germany came in from the west. Poland thought Russia was going to help them. But two weeks later, Russia came in from the east. Thousands of Polish, thousands of Polish um, uh, military people were captured, taken to uh, Russia. And my dad was in Russia for two years, basically left to starve to death. When Germany started invading Russia, Russia said, we need help. So my dad, with thousands of Polish military people were let go, went down to the Middle East. He slowly got his um, strength back. Many of them died in Russia. They went to battle in Italy. And then um, he wanted to go back to Poland, but Russia occupied Poland and continued on with their killing. So it wasn't safe for him to go back to Poland, so he went to Britain, came over to um, Canada. My mother came to Canada, 18 years old, from Poland, um, and they met here in Victoria, in James Bay. My mom was a nurse for a short period. They moved up to uh, Nanaimo, and um, uh, we grew up in Nanaimo. My mom would always say, you know, we need to stick together. 
never show off, uh, respect your elders. And we had a small house, you'd say, get outside and play. <laughs> but as a young person, my mom would always pray for us. And at the beginning of my walk, God was selling to me like an insurance policy. I'd bring him out of my back pocket and I'd say, Lord, get me out of this. I'm on a plane, it's going to crash. And then I drew more with God and he became someone that I wanted. I had many mentors. I had uh, many, many mentors. And I wanted Jesus to be a mentor for me. And I thought that was pretty good. But I've got to the point now where I want to be on his team. I want to serve his will. I tasted his real goodness. I want to just take a moment now just to um, give thanks. Many of you know that we were in accident December 23rd. And I just want to spend a moment thanking many, many people. I hope I don't miss anybody. Um, I want to start with Alana Kosman, Pastor Marion's wife. She was like an angel to me at San Pen. I was first at San Pan, the rest of my family were at Lake General, one other person, um, Sarah's boyfriend was at uh, Royal Jubilee. And I had broken ribs, but I just wanted to go see my family. And, and she said, Grace is going through the pain of her heart. But she, she said that she wanted to be by Sarah. Because she knew Sarah was going through more pain. So somehow she convinced the hospital to let her sleep on the floor for a week beside Sarah's bed. I want to thank um, neighbors. I want to thank uh, Claudia's sister, Mike Majoka. Going in for a CT scan came out so positive. Michael Greer and Angela Greer, special thanks. They were just there when we needed them. And the best thing was, you know, he'd bring food when we wanted. But it's something I wanted to do is more active listening. When we said, okay, we just want to take a break, he understood that. Uh, Dave Featherby for the mini rides. Um, Skip for the flowers. Um, Bev, Lorraine, Rick also for the wonderful food. So many people, I hope I haven't missed anybody, there's so many members I want to help and say thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to um, getting closer to God. Um, and, and through that whole experience, you know, I, I, as bad as it was, I feel blessed. Um, we've come closer as a family and, and, um, uh, and just feel closer to God. So, over my life, there's been many experiences that has drawn me closer to God. Um, one was, um, well, many with my family and friends. I can remember being in, in Brazil on a basketball tournament, and I was about 18 years old, and this um, basketball player, his name was James Worthy, became a very good player. 
I'd go back to the hotel and I'd see this guy standing on the hotel steps playing his guitar and about 20, 30 homeless kids around him. And he just felt like he was having a great time. And to me, something touched my heart. I mean, there's the Holy Spirit working in so many, so many people. Um, other situations that draw me closer to God, uh, they talk about evolution. But even Darwin himself confessed that it was absurd to propose that the human eye evolved through spontaneous mutation and natural selection. If we go to the next slide. The feather bees and a couple of us went to Costa Rica. Oh, that's my family. Um, if we go to the next slide, right here. This is a house we went many years ago to Costa Rica, and it's another situation that drew me closer to God. I call them dots, and dots in my life. And here's a family that we thought we were doing so much wonderful work to them, with them. And we uh, renovated their house. They had two handicapped children. And we bought some furniture. Um, and I remember sitting down, and I'll never forget this, sitting down with the father as we are putting the bed together. And all excited, I said, isn't this going to make your wife so happy? And he looked at me, we we're both crying, he looked at me and said, Gerald, my wife is happy. This is just going to make her life easier. And from there on, I'll never forget, happiness is a choice. You either choose to be happy or not. Yeah, we, life is tough, there's a lot of tough things, but you choose to be happy. You choose God. A coach said you, he was all about building relationships. And then tell them your source of energy. And for him, it was God. Another coach said, character is what you do when no one is watching. Being connected to God. Sometimes it's just planting a seed. So much talent in this church and so many wonderful things happening here. Don't focus on the problem. Focus on Jesus. And I wanted to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So I started reading more and more of the Bible. And when you're reading the Bible, you get more clarity. Otherwise, if we go to the next slide, we see this so often. Two people on a donkey, poor animal. And we see in this world so many discussions about what's the right way to do it, what's the wrong way to do it. And yes, there's differences. There's cultural differences. But going to Scripture is the way to go. If we go to the next slide... For me, the order of importance is faith, God our creator first, what we do, serving, relationships, being connected to family, friends, and community. In the Bible, it's stated over 200 times the word family, how important the family is. And Satan really wants to break that up. If he can get to the family, and he's been doing it, he's... he's, he's, he's Succeeding in what he wants to do. He wants to break our relationship with God. And a big part of there is communication, listening, and, and I want to be more articulate. We've going through a, a, a service right now, and, and I want to thank Bob and Sandy in the past for the um, um, Love and Respect seminar. And it just talks about how we're so different each one of us. Not only men and females, but each one of us are different. And communication, I mean, so many times, Claudia and I will have arguments. And we want the same thing, but we just don't communicate the right way. And communication is so, so important. We've had heated discussions. Rarely do we go to sleep upset, but we'll have heated discussions. And we want the same thing. It's all about love and respect. And sometimes we'll argue, and I'll forget what we're arguing about before, after. And, and she's learned. She's become very um, good now. She says, Gerald, you're extremely smart, giving me respect. But eventually you'll see that I'm right. <laughs> or I, the other day I was pretty proud. I said, wow, my daughters, I've learned so much from my daughters. And she'd say, 
jet out. When I know she said jet out, that's when I've got to be patient and sit down. And one of the things I've got to learn is be patient. So she'll say, jet out, you're extremely smart. You've been learning from your daughters for years. But Satan wants to break up families. He wants to break that relationship with, with God. And then health. And we have wonderful health seminars here. And the last thing is, is your career, your finances. I mean, those things come and go. And really, they're there just so you can enjoy the top things. You know, we have so much advancement in this world, but yet there's so much suffering, so much death at an early age, poverty, slavery, corruption. It's hard not to be overwhelmed, even cynical, or become indifferent, or see hopelessness, or give up altogether. So many choices. We have cruel dictators, but they come up with some different things. There's a Malinsky Act that now goes against human rights violations across borders, um, against government officials, their sanctions if you create human rights off offenses. But, but in one country, terrorism can be totally different what we think is terrorism. In one dictator country, terrorism can be simply saying you're against him. And then you could be, become a, um, considered a, um, a threat. So communication is so important. Other places, there's other places in this world, if you're dropping your wallet, someone else comes behind you, picks it up. Here we call it steer, stealing. Other places they say, well, that's bad luck for you, good luck for me. Then what happens when this person becomes the president? All this money coming into the government, good luck for him. We don't consider it that way. So communication is so important. And that's why later on we'll come to the Ten Commandments, which is the cornerstone for us. But also planning. Many leaders will say planning is so important, so important. But the moment you make a plan, it's outdated. But still, they say it's very important. Isabella talked a few weeks ago about human trafficking and all types of sex trades, slave trades, organ. It's unbelievable, unbelievable what's going on out in this world. I can remember many years ago being in Brazil, going on this bus ride and seeing, looked like a dog in front of me, and driving closer, it turned out to be a little person, and he was walking like a dog, and I asked, what's going on here? So much competition for begging that the parents would say to one, one child, we're going to lame you so that people feel more sorry for you. And it just blows my mind, I had nightmares. How could a parent do something to their child? But we cannot judge because we're not in that situation. Planning. We've got to go into planning. But there's two projections. When you do a plan on your own, there's two projections. One you got it lucky, or two, you're wrong. The only projections you can do is with God and get it right. A watch, a watch that's broken is right twice a day. And there's going to be many people that come and deceive you that will create miracles, and you got to be aware. Another example of planning, Mike Tyson, a former boxer, his opponent was going to say, okay, this is what I'm planning to do, planning to do. Mike Tyson simply responded to him, plans are great, but it all changes when you get punched in the face. And we've all been punched in the face, either physically, emotionally, financially, or even spiritually. And what do we do? Do we focus on him? Or do we go back to certain things that we've done in the past? If we go to the next slide. Three things, oh, Claudia, you put this slide in here? No. <laughs> Three things I like to do. First, when people ask me, what do I do? Make sure there's a smile on my wife's face. A connector from where you are to where you want to be. And 
most important is help people find and follow Jesus, my trusted friend, and let the Holy Spirit take over. If we go to the next slide. Proverbs 3.5. Thank you, Matthew, for reading that today. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will direct your paths. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn your back on evil. And then Corinthians 15, 58. So my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immobile. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord. And I love this. For you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Imagine going through your life and not doing anything useless. So you want to focus on him. If we go to the next one. As we prepare our lives, we're going to have opportunities in life. And it's when your gifts and the needs of others may intersect becomes fulfillment. Others may call it good luck. But you continue to prepare. God's going to give you the opportunity. And don't be um, impatient. Don't be in a hurry. Don't think that, oh, it's not working out. We've got we to gotta trust God. It's going to be in his time, not our time. If we go to the next slide, how often are we guilty of this? We're too busy. You know, and, and maybe that's God trying to help us out. I mean, I'm guilty of this. And it's funny that without a relationship, I can see this happening. I, I, I've gone into Sydney and I see this person needing help moving stuff onto his truck. He doesn't know me, I don't know him, and I'll go up and offer, you need some help? He looks at me, this tall guy, he's a little scared. He says, no, I'm good. And I know, I know he can't do it. So we need to form that relationship before we can do it. Um, you know, uh, there was two young people had a meeting with our pastor, and this is a story, it's not true, so. The two people went into um, Sydney, East Sydney, and they wanted to um, share God's goodness. And they were talking about the Sabbath. They were talking about all the good things and how wrong they were. And, 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 and they were talking to the pastor about how wonderful some people were listening. But the majority of people, they just really, really got upset. Really got upset. And, and they said to the pastor, says, I didn't know you had enemies in East Sydney. And the pastor says, we don't. And the two young people looked at each other and says, well, you do now. And often we do things on our own intuition. And we don't listen to God wholeheartedly. We may listen to God 70, 80 percent, but are we listening to, them wholeheartedly, listening to God wholeheartedly and, and right to the end? Are we focusing on Jesus, or are we focusing on people? Um, next slide. If we, who remembers back in, um, oh, and we want to, there, this is a story about two wolves. Which one do you feed? Do you feed the bitter one or the joyful one? If we go to the next slide. Who remembers back in 1988, Ben Johnson? He was a Canadian uh, runner that um, won the gold. And then a, a week later, he uh, was, it was taken away. We used, I was in the 88 Olympics, and usually we don't get to see any other events, but I was at the finish line here. That's not my picture. I don't, uh, someone else I, I can't find who to give credit to. But I was at the finish line here. And surprisingly, a week later, when he lost his gold medal, there was people that became depressed. Now, how unrealistic is that? When you start focusing on people and we start lifting them up, we've got to be careful. We should be focusing. I mean, it's happened in the church. It's happened. And, I, I, I'm, you know, we probably have two people here, Skip and Scott, the closest to Jesus. But we can't lift them up too high because if, if they're too high, they're human. They're going to make a mistake. 
We should always be focusing on Jesus. Uh, one time I remember playing basketball and the coach stopped the practice of jail. Said, this guy just elbowed you. And I was so focused on getting the rebound, I didn't even know it. But I think subconsciously, because he was about four inches taller than me, 30 pounds lighter, uh, heavier, I, I didn't do anything. But we, we see that we need to keep focusing and looking at Jesus. When we start looking at other people, when there's name calling, when people are saying, oh, your clothes are different, turn and look at Jesus. And when you get punched in the mouth, look at Jesus. I mean, there's so much corruption in this world, so much lust. Turn to Jesus. Don't turn to what I call the icks. Don't become a workaholic, a druggic, alcoholic. Don't become enamored with porn, comfort food. So many things that people turn to instead of Jesus. There's greed, there's power instead of the rights and needs of other people. And that's what God wants, that's what God wants to get so close to us, but yet Satan wants to break that relationship up. Wants to break that relationship. We talked about all the good things in the world, and sometimes I get overwhelmed. I see some terrible things. You know, we talk, or there's residential schools. I mean, it wasn't even a good idea. But we look at orphanages now. Um, ADRA does remarkable work. IJM, International Justice Mission, does remarkable work. But apparently right now, you'd be astounded. There's 40 million slaves today in this world. Another big problem, 40% of the world live outside law enforcement. So it happens if, if a, a family, the husband dies, neighbors will come in, take the house, nothing can be done. Can you, we can't imagine that happening. 40% outside of law enforcement. Orphanages. We used to have them here in North America, but we don't have them anymore. But yet there's many of them in Africa. Why? Maybe it's good intentions initially. Maybe it's good business. But many of the Africans just totally hate it because what it's doing is ripping up families. If, if, and, and apparently 80 to 90 percent of the kids in orphanages have one parent. So if you're a mother walking by an orphanage and you see them getting educated, you're getting food, you're, you're going to want to take them to that orphanage. But you're ripping up the family. And, and many, many countries, many people are, are against orphanages and they're trying to get rid of them. What they want to do is, ha is have support for the families and not rip them up. Many good ideas, but is God leading them? Focus on his character, better way, his will. Reveal his true loving character, Satan. Don't let Satan break that relationship. Can be contagious and spreading like the flu bug, spread love, courage, and his will. Be comfortable with uncomfortable. We we talk in the Bible we read in the Bible about wide is the way and narrow is the way. Who can tell me what narrow is the way means? What is that Bible text referring to when he says narrow is the way? Bruce? Focus on Jesus. Thank you. Narrow is the way. Focus on Jesus. Too often we focus on our will, not his will. And we start doing things that isn't his will. And it really starts with faith. So many people believe in God, but they only have him as insurance possible. They don't really have the faith in God. If we go to the next slide. The Ten Commandments. We know these by heart. And 
and they're all so important. But oftentimes we gloss over the tenth one, coveting. Often we want everyone to be like us, or we envy someone else. We have ads out there that, I want that. God loves each one of us and made each of one of us unique and special. If we have a homeless person come in today, or the prime minister, God loves them each the same, and we should be treating them the same also. You know, the world says sky is a limit. With Jesus, there is no limit. Go to the next slide. Things of this world, flesh, crave, consume, versus things of heaven, spirit, love, peace, and joy. Do something money can't buy. This world is hard and not fair, but keep looking at your source of information and motivation. And I'm closing up quickly here. Have simple choices, but it's not easy. Keep looking to him with prayer and studying his word. We have so many good people in this church doing awesome things. Quality education at Lakeview, and I want to thank everyone there. They're not mere reflectors of human accomplishments, but to have the Holy Spirit in your heart while doing God's will. If we go to the next slide. Let food be your medicine. We have Louise and Val and many people here sharing his goodness about food. Go to the next slide. With heaven build a little, with love build a little heaven on earth. We have wonderful people, Rick, Skip, Bob, so many people here that are great at constructing things and, and there's plans to um, help with assisted living here next door. Go to the next slide. And this is what I want to do at Lakeview School when I get healthy, is just join one of their soccer matches. That's me when I'm getting a little older. So the next slide. So like the Pacific white-sided dolphin, know his will for you. It's wonderful. Hang out with him and draw closer to God. Next slide. Where's your ladder going? Next one. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not easily self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Next one. Do things money can't buy. Hard, this is a hard and unfair, hard and unfair things of this world, like focusing on flesh, crave, and consume, versus things of heaven, spirit, love, peace, and joy. Next. And don't ever give up. I don't know if you can see that slide, but there's a frog that is not going to give up. As tough as it's going to be in your life, Stay focused on Jesus, and even as dark as it may be, don't give up. Next. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Next one. So be like the Pacific white-sided dolphins. Hang out with God. Next one. In 2019, read his words. Pray and trust God, our creator, wholeheartedly. Amen.